everybody. Welcome to So Very Crafty. And we are here today to make this terrific little wine tote. It is the perfect gift to give a bottle of wine to anybody uh, at any time of the year, quite frankly. I've used some lovely Christmas fabric here today for my wine tote, but um, you can use any fabric you like. This is a uh, pattern that comes from allpeoplequilt.com, and I know that there are people out there who struggle with this pattern, but it's really very easy once you know how to do it. So I suggest that you um, watch this video and learn how to make this wine tote in no time at all. It is fun, it is functional, and it's quite pretty if you choose the right fabric. So if you enjoy this project, please su subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and ding that bell for notifications so that you can get access to future, excuse me, so that you can get access to future videos from So Very Crafty. But for today, we're gonna learn how to make this terrific little wine tote. So let's get started. So how do we get started making this terrific little gift bag project? the first thing you're going to need to do is download the pattern. And I have attached a link to the pattern for this uh, particular project. And it comes from allpeoplequilt.com. And it's called the Craft and Carry. And it comes with instructions on how to make this uh, in diagram form. And it comes with the pattern. And when you cut out the pattern and tape it together, it looks like this. It looks kind of like a wine bottle uh, in a way. And what it tells you to do is it tells you to tape the pattern together and then take a large piece of paper. And I've used just uh, sort of packing paper, brown paper and you're gonna place it on the fold. You're gonna fold it in half and cut this pattern, at least the bottom part, just the bottom part on the fold. The rest of this will not be cut on the fold. And once you cut it on the fold, you're going to have a piece that looks like this, which is two sort of wine bottle shapes side by side with a fold in the middle. From that, you are going to cut one outer piece, one interfacing piece, and one lining piece. Now on the interfacing, the pattern does not say what type of interfacing to use. You could use a Pellon 808 Craft Fuse or an SF-101, but I decided to use a fusible fleece for this since we are going to be putting in a glass bottle. I thought it would give it a little more cushion. So I'm just using a Pellon uh, 987F fusible fleece for my project today. The other pattern piece that it comes with is just the circle, which is for the bottom of our wine tote. And you're gonna cut one lining, one fleece, and one outer piece for that. We're gonna set aside these pattern pieces, and we're gonna get started on how to create this project. The first thing, as in almost all of our So Very Crafty videos, is we are going to fuse our fusible fleece to our outer fabric. And we are going to follow our manufacturer's instructions for the type of interfacing that you choose to use for your project. We're going to fuse that to the circle bottom and to the outer main part of our carrying tote for our wine bottle. 
So I'm just going to run over to the iron right now and I am going to fuse this fleece to the outer fabric and I've used a nice Christmassy fabric for our project today. Um, and I'm going to fuse this fleece using a hot iron and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I have fused our fleece onto our outer side of our carrying tote. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to place our lining piece right sides together with our outer tote. And I'm going to pin it just on the curves of our tote. Now, if you're a beginner sewist, you may want to use a lot of pins for this. I'm just going to do that for now. Um, if you're a more advanced sewist, you may not need any pins at all. But we are going to head over to the sewing machine, and we are going to stitch just the outer curve and the inner curve. And that's it. We're not going to stitch anything else right now. Just the outer curve and the inner curve. We're not going to stitch across the top and we're not going to stitch on the sides or the bottom. So let's head over to the sewing machine and let's stitch along these curves. Okay, here we are at the sewing machine and we are going to stitch along our curves and we're going to use a one quarter inch seam allowance while we do that. Make sure to remove these pins as you go. go to the inner curve when we get to the point we're going to pivot head back up the other side. And go back down our last curve. And that's it. So let's head back over to the workstation and move on to our next step. Here we are back at the workstation. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to snip right here in this center piece so that we don't get any puckers. Make sure to not snip through the stitching here. And we can do a 
some notching on the outer edge, but I find you don't really need it for this project, so I'm not going to do it today. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this right handle and we are going to flip it right sides out. So it looks like that. Then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take this right handle and we are going to put it inside of our left handle, making sure that the right sides of the outer piece and the right sides of the lining are facing each other. And we want to make sure that these raw edges are all aligned. And now we have kind of two aligning piece and an outer piece. And the next thing that we're going to do is stitch all the way across this short edge through all of the layers and there are going to be four layers, two lining layers and two outer fabric layers, one which has the fusible fleece. And again, we're going to use just a one quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna head over to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna stitch a line right across here using my one quarter inch seam allowance. I'm not gonna show that on the video because it's just a straight stitch right across here. Okay, now we have sewn that seam right across the top. We're gonna pull out the handles. And as you can see, we have the handle just like that. And now we are going to fold this in half so that the lining pieces are right sides together and the outer pieces are right sides together. And we're just gonna place a few pins. Now, if you're a beginner sewist, you may want to add uh, a bunch of pins here to keep it nice and sturdy. But if you're a more advanced sewist, you don't really need to do that uh, because this is just going to be a straight stitch all the way across. Now you can see we have one long seam right across the side. So we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch a one quarter inch seam all the way down this side along the outer edge of the outer fabric and the lining fabric. And it's just like a tube at this point. That's all it looks like, just a tube. So we are going to head over to the sewing machine and stitch all the way down this, uh, this seam. And we'll be back. Here we are back at the sewing machine and we are going to just stitch a one quarter inch seam allowance all the way up the side.
and that's it. Now we are back and we are going to turn our bag so that it is lining side out. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our circle piece and we're just going to stitch around this using about an eighth inch seam allowance so that these two pieces are joined together. So let's head over to the sewing machine and take care of that. Here we are back at the sewing machine and we are just going to stitch two pieces together. Now that we have stitched these two pieces together, we are going to place them here on the bottom of our tote and pin. I like to pin them opposite sides then opposite sides There we go, we have our bottom pinned. Actually, I'm gonna put one more pin right here. And we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch all the way around this. And the one thing that you're going to notice is that with this uh, pattern, there are gonna be raw edges that are inside the, this uh, particular bag, but it's no worry, it's just, the inside of the bag, so we're not going to worry too much about it. So let's head over to the sewing machine and let's stitch these two pieces together. Here we are back at the sewing machine and I have pinned these pieces together and I'm going to use my one quarter inch seam allowance and I am going to press these edges down as I go and take the pins out as well and I'm going to take my time here Again, just manipulate this as you go along. Stop as many times as you have to.
And there we go, we've stitched our bottom to our wine tote. So let's head over to our workstation and I will show off our finished product. So here we are, we have finished the bottom of our wine tote. Now all we have to do is turn this right sides out. We see a nice finished bottom to our wine tote. And a beautiful result. And that's all there is to making this fantastic little wine tote. Um, all you have to do is put in a bottle of wine and you are ready to go. I hope you enjoyed this project today. I know a lot of people struggle with it a little bit um, because the instructions aren't that clear. But um, as you can see, this is a super simple project to make uh, using just a little bit of fabric and a little bit of know-how. It is a very, very easy project to make, and it is perfect for the gift of wine for any holiday season or any time of the year. So if you enjoyed this project, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and ding that bell for future notifications so that you can get uh, notifications of future So Very Crafty videos. That's all there is for today. Um, if you want more sewing and crafting projects that aren't on the YouTube channel, head over to www.soverycrafty.com and check out what I have over on the blog. You'll be glad you did. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you all next time.